feet on your feet highway. On your feet uh, highway. <laughs> on your feet. This is Service Headline News. I'm your host, Marty Smith, and I'm joined by Mr. History, Eric Perot. <laughs> Hello, fellas. And our man in the closet, Jake Wall. How you doing, guys? Good to see you. We're here to bring you the latest headlines and updates pertinent to all servicemen and women. So take your seats, get informed, and have a laugh as the Swearing In Podcast presents Service Headline News. I, I've been trying to work on the inflection because every time I tail off and I listen to it, I was like, that sounds dumb. But I covered up, with, I covered up with music, so. <laughs> it fades into Jesus. Marty, I must say, you're looking very salt and pepper. I know, man. My brother came out yeah. here. And this salt uh, and pepper look. My brother that came out here gorgeous, a though. month ago, and he was all white. And I was like, holy shit. I was, he was as white as your beard. I was like, very distinguished. I guess that's where I'm going. There you go. I don't know. I should. At least to... you got it. The <laughs> hairline is almost all the way down to the eyebrows. It's, I don't know. It's sometimes, so that, sometimes that isn't that easier now or no? What? The baldness? The, the bald, bald head thing. Right? Oh, I just shave it. I shave every day. Because I don't think it has any kind of stigma that it used to. Right? No, I don't, I don't shave Not it since Jordan did it. I think it's all... Stateside, I don't know, but overseas you don't see a lot of bald guys. Oh, in certain really? areas. Yeah. Yeah, there's, in probably, England, not there a, wasn't there's a lot probably not a lot of London. bald Greeks. Right, Eric? <laughs> I don't know. Those guys got hair for days. Well, right? you were just there. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Hey, I'm going to need you to actually do a survey of the male hairline next country you go to. You should say that for the end of the show. (laughs) Top or bottom, your choice. I'll stay top. I'll stay top. Can you you run your hand through their hair or through their chest? No. man. Why not? <laughs> no. We'll give you, you just wear your hat, your podcast hat. Here's what like, I'll tell you. A podcast. Here's what I tell you. When the show starts paying me, I'm on board. No. Oh, you'll fondle <laughs> random dudes on a beach if the show pays you. I'll rub the shit out of that chest hair, baby. Give it there, to me. There you go, listeners. Just start to start donating. Um, Patreon. <laughs> subscribe to our Patreon. So Eric can fondle random people on random Not beaches. Just chest. Remember, I told you. Oh yeah, up, sorry. Up Assess hairlines. That's what I'm talking. About. Will that be an outing in the tactical bra? No. Because I gotta, we gotta add a level of difficulty to this thing. I'm 60 years old. You pay me, I'll wear that shit anywhere you want me to wear. Oh, he's a mercenary now. I'll I wear that shit anywhere know. you want me. To I man. like how you just. That was a nice default to. Right there, there yeah. Marty, a mercenary <laughs> as opposed to a whore. <laughs> I'll do anything for money. Oh, he's clearly a mercenary. No, you you missed the I was defaulting part. to the other side. That's that's podcast language, Jake. That's oh. podcast Something, language. Something's got to pay my retirement, right? So. Podcast language for <laughs> what? You're such a whore. Yeah, we should have we should have hit it big by now, Eric. Oh, no. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, start us off right. Do you like that, Mister History? I do. Popped into me, popped into me like on a third beer one night, and I was like, Mister History. So I want you both to know that I have signed my resignation if this doesn't go over well. Popped into you like a Thursday night at the Blue Oyster. Well, but that's but. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe maybe, my resignation. Maybe popped wasn't the greatest uh, terminology (laughs) there. This one. Uh, This is military. You don't get to resign from shit. Oh, that's true. Yeah, okay. IRR proved that. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> President right, just put a stop to that shit. Jake yeah. from State Farm is even gonna like that shit. All okay, right. All here right. it comes. You ready? You're, even the title of this shit is good for tonight. Whoa. All right, here it comes. Story time with Eric. Story time with Eric. <laughs> so, July nineteenth, nineteen fifty-seven. Whoa. Nineteen fifty-seven. Yeah, we're staying, staying, <laughs> staying new. Nice. Uh, five men, five men agreed to stand directly under an exploding nuclear bomb. Army men? Army men. You don't think they'd be Air Force people, do you? Yeah, you think you <laughs> can get, <laughs> you could not get Air Force people to do that. Hell no, these are Army Oh, men. yeah. 
army guys. And so Whoa. they weren't crazy. They weren't being punished. And they all volunteered to do this Jesus. with the exception of one. And he was a civilian cameraman. <laughs> oh, shit. So okay. five, five Air Force officers, one okay. photographer, stood together on a patch of ground about 65 miles northwest of Las Vegas. Wait, yeah. Army officers? Army uh, officers. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, you know all what? officers? Oh my God, I just screwed this up. It's not Army, it's Air Force officers. <laughs> Wait, Gosh, what? Dang it, Eric. Well, five Air Force officers. My bad. This I'm proves. Not... Wait, wait, wait. Wait, do you want to start here? it again? I can edit it. You want to start it again? Well, I thought they were Army because of the uniform, but they're Air Force. <laughs> but this proves that Air Force officers are dumber than your average private. I would have to agree. Because apparently, I thought, apparently, now that we just disparaged all the Air Force, and like Air Force not dumb enough to stand out there. Yeah. Air Force officers are dumb <laughs> enough. Officers <to> are. <laughs> you mean I'll get a good promotion rating? Oh, man. Oh, yeah. You'll be able to edit this shit. So here we go. I'm On July 19th. In. I'm leaving it in, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, because, yeah, leave it in. On July 19th, 1957, five Air Force officers, one photographer, stood together on a pouch of ground about 65 miles northwest of Vegas. They'd marked the spot, ground zero, population five. I love that part. On a hand-lettered sign hammered into the soft ground right next to them. As we watch, there's a video, and that's what it's talking about as we watch. I'm just going to read it to you. Uh, Directly overhead... Two F-89 jets. I think the F-89 was a Scorpion. Oh, you got me. What was the Sabre? Was that the 86? That was the 86. The 89, I think, was a Scorpion. Two F-89 jets roar into view, and one of them shoots off a nuclear missile carrying an atomic warhead. They wait. There's a countdown. 18,500 feet above them, the missile is detonated and blows up. Which means these men intentionally stood directly underneath an exploding two kiloton nuclear bomb. Okay. One of them at the key moment, he's wearing sunglasses, looks up. He sees a flash of light. Amazingly, they all survive. So who are these guys? Well, no, (laughs) you're going to love this ending. Who are these guys? The mounds are vibrating. Bri- the mounds are vibrating. It's a tremendous directly explosion directly above our heads. This footage comes from our government's archives. It was shot by the U.S. Air Force at the behest of Colonel Arthur Barney. He's a public information officer with the Continental Air Defense Command in Colorado Springs. What was the operation called? Or what was the, uh, the thing Operation called? Plum Bob? Oh. <laughs> so you had. Two colonels, two majors, and a fifth officer agreed to stand right below the blast. Only the cameraman, George Yoshitaki, didn't volunteer. So I'm assuming that means his his job said, you're going to do this. I, I love the reason. So the country was just beginning to worry about nuclear fallout, and the Air Force wanted to reassure people that it was okay to use atomic weapons to counter similar weapons being developed in Russia. Unbelievable that they'd even say that. So the bottom line here is they stand under an explosion that was 18,500 feet above. I think it's like three miles above them. So it didn't create a major fallout and they all survived. Mm -hmm. So Colonel Sidney Bruce died in 2005 at age 86. Current Lieutenant Colonel Frank Ball died in 2003 at age 83. Major John Hughes, and he's not sure if this is the right guy. He believes it is. He died in 1990 at the age of 71. Major Norman Baldinger, uh, and they're unclear if this guy is still alive. They couldn't find a record of him. And then the <laughs> fifth guy, uh, born 1924, died at 1987, age 63. But they all survived the blast and the lack of radiation, which is pretty amazing. So was this like uh, for like a proving ground or something or like an experiment? Yes. Yeah. It was, te- like I said, it was testing 
um, the survivability of high nukes, nukes uh, detonated at high altitudes. Um, and it's funny because there's a place in Utah, St. George, Utah, uh, which experienced yeah. a, a large amount of uninvited fallout. This one occurred oh. in 1953. Uh, As opposed to invited wind. fallout. Yeah, to the point where wind. residents were forced to stay inside for many hours and prohibited from washing their cars until it became less radioactive. But all these things were detonated high above, so there was not that much. Damn. Well, the wind can catch that, right? Wind currents push yep. radiation yep. all around. So the closing was all five men survived. <laughs> they did not. They didn't die of any of the effects from the explosion of the nuclear device above them. So know. the moral of the story is: okay. so they... don't be stupid and stand under a nuclear explosion, regardless of how high it is. Well, I'm opinion. telling you, I'm telling you what they were telling them about radiation back then. Could be what they're telling the military about, about COVID vaccine and... right now, or anthrax, you know, yep. or RSV for kids, or whatever the fuck they're going to administer. Or COVID, jeez, that's what I mean. He, yeah, he already that was his number two. Oh, no, I didn't hear it. <laughs> I gotta are, get with the ball game. We I'm are older. a fucking machine tonight. <laughs> okay, uh, let's. Let's stumble into the news. Uh, let's. Jesus, I feel like those guys under the nuclear explosion right now. So, yeah, feel okay. I'm a little tired. Yeah. A little tired. flash of light. My eyes hurting a little bit. I got, I I got a taste of copper in my mouth, but everything, everything else is okay. I think so. My Geiger counter is off the <laughs> charts, but it's okay. Good. All right, let's start the news off with uh, a good story. All right. Uh, not Operation Plum Bob. Let me get rid of that. Plum Bob. Okay. Uh, a soldier, Al, a soldier saved, this from military.com. A soldier saved a woman from a violent assault. Now he's being honored with a rare valor award, which is the Soldier's Medal. So, Specialist Rene Rodriguez was out of Schofield Barracks, Hawaii. He saw a woman being viciously attacked outside a coffee shop. It was the middle of October, so obviously this happened last year. Mm. There were plenty of onlookers, but onlookers, but nobody was stepping in. He said, my heart dropped because I saw someone being violently abused. I saw nobody was helping. I was scared, nervous, but I just stepped outside of my car and let my instincts take action. I was just by myself. Mm. There were people who could have come in and helped me, helped the situation, but decided, but people decided to look instead. Rodriguez, a medic with the 25th Infantry Division, confronted the man who he said reeked of alcohol. <laughs> he was getting coffee. So this guy was, is he one of those Okinawa Marines who are drunk in the mornings? <laughs> you know, if they, he couldn't find a balcony, so he's going to beat up on this woman. Anyway. Yep. Hey, isn't uh, that the same kind of thing where this guy on the New York subway chokes out the guy because nobody else was acting? But I think the guy oh. died. Now he's being charged and all yeah, that crap. The, the Marine, nice. Yeah, that's true. Same, same kind I don't of stuff. think that's the same because this guy didn't do that much. I mean, well, huh. he did that much, but he didn't do, he didn't try to subdue the guy. Okay. So maybe that was the smart thing he did. The guy that he saw was kicking and punching a woman in her early 30s. Wow. She was screaming for help, thinking she was going to die. He got between the two, shoved the man, and swiftly put the woman into his car. He says, as I get back in the car with her in it, the man opens the door, pulls her out, and starts beating her again. Oh, and I would have had to subdue that guy. Uh, so he runs out and he pushes him. The woman got back into Rodriguez's car. The attacker smashed the passenger window as he started to drive away. Now, now you're done, Jack. You busted up my car. That... You know, if that window was fully up, that's not an easy thing to do. No, you know, it's that's it's like in the movies. Actually. In the movies, when they show you break a beer bottle, everybody knows <laughs> you can't just shatter a beer bottle. Like no, that. oh no. Nor can you just <laughs> oh, like no. put your elbow through a window. That's yeah, you, you may break a bone doing that. I I've seen. There was one drunken night where <laughs> only one. Yeah, well, a friend was like, we all learned from his 
even in their <laughs> drunken state, we learned from him. Yeah. He was like, I could break this Heineken bottle over my head. Oh, like, no. Oh, you can't. He was like, yeah, I can. <laughs> I still <laughs> remember the sound of that bottle made going. Oh, my head. God. That dull thud. <laughs> oh, man. Back, he's like. <laughs> he just sit down on the curb for a while, man. You're good. He didn't knock himself out, but he, he it staggered. was close. It was close. <laughs> yeah. Holy cow. I bet he saw a little star action. Oh, that bink noise was fantastic. <laughs> like full swing? You know? Full swing. Full swing from like the thigh butt cheek area. Just wham. Wow. He had, so he had to be so slosh. He had to be. Oh, he had been yeah. drinking a lot? Okay. Yeah, we, like, we, God, man. we had been drinking for a while. He couldn't rely on his friends to stop him. So. <laughs> well, we were like, no, don't do it. No, don't do this. <laughs> no, stop. No, you shouldn't <laughs> do that. <laughs> it was oh. like we all had cell phones, but it wasn't like the video era of cell phones. Oh, you know? my oh my God. God. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. That would have been a great video. <laughs> oh, that, yeah. All right, so the woman got back in. He smashed the window, right? Oh, my goodness. Uh, as, but he drove away. So finally, police showed up and detained the guy. Rodriguez said he and the woman made it out with relatively minimal injuries. Some bruises are cut from the broken window, uh, and he doesn't know what spurred the attack. So on, the, on today, I think today, uh, Rodriguez is set to be awarded the Soldier's Medal, the service's highest award for heroism outside of combat. So that's what outside it is. Oh, okay. Soldier's Medal outside of combat. Conflict right. with an enemy. Yeah, yeah I got it. That's cool. The write-up is he used his body as a shield, endured numerous strikes from the assailant, oh. all while moving the woman into his vehicle to depart the scene. He continued to protect the woman until law enforcement arrived on the scene. By his demonstrated heroism and risking his life to save another, Specialist Rodriguez's actions reflect great credit upon him, 25th Infantry Division, and the United States Army. So, how do you sure how do you not so. retaliate against this guy striking you? I, I, I don't mean, know. I protect I don't the know. woman, yeah. I get that, but how do you not fight back? I, 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 I mean, guess I'm, I'm sure. Uh, that's Specialist Rodriguez there. Nice. Uh, good. I, I guess, Young but good. you know, in retrospect, that's probably the smartest thing to do. It, Cause, right. Because as soon as you oh, turn yeah. to the guy, that's You're when they're like, the oh, this guy assaulted him. And then the lawyers are involved in mm -hmm. all this other shit. So. Well, hence the guy on the subway who's charged with yeah. I don't know, right, right, right. right. Or right. So. Um, good so, on this kid. He's a young kid, too. Took yeah. A lot of balls. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty good to jump in, especially when everybody just wants to sit around and watch and videotape it. Yeah. Yeah. So, I'm videotape you, old man. <laughs> With their phone. Video <laughs> videotape. <laughs> two decades, uh, man. And I got my VHS running. Hold on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go to another story. Another feel-good story from Task and Purpose. Uh, California Pararescue Team performs daring nighttime mid-ocean rescue. So I, I still have questions on why these guys got called out, but let's go into the story. It's pretty cool. Uh, uh, as and, and they, they, they write this a little drama, so I didn't really edit it, so I apologize. But as an HC-130 fired off flares to light up the black ocean below, a team of four California Air National Guard pararescue men parachuted into the Pacific Ocean on July 8th on a daring nighttime mission to reach a badly injured crew member of a Costa Rican fishing boat. So the PJs jump, these PJs jumped 750 miles off the coast of Costa Rica after an all day flight from Moffitt Air National Guard base just outside of San Jose. Yeah. So generally, Air Force or Air wow. Guard teams are only dispatched on such missions when emergencies occur beyond the range of Coast Guard helicopters or other shore-based help and when no other ships are nearby to assist. So uh, I guess there was nobody there. So they launched this uh, C-130 and, and mm -hmm. jumped these guys out. It's pretty badass. That is pretty cool. The team was responding to a call for help sent the day before from a Costa Rican fishing boat uh, where a crew member had been struck in the head by a metal pole when a pulley snapped. The fishermen sustained head lacerations 
And by the time the Californians arrived overhead, the man was in and out of consciousness and vomiting. So just getting within range of the boat would take a full day's flight. Costa Rica is 3,000 miles from San Jose. Uh, an HC-130 crew from the 129th and a four-man PJ team started the long flight on the morning of July 8th. The crew also included tactical aircraft maintainer, uh, specialist tech sergeant Jose Arceo as a translator for radio communications with the boat's crew. Though the <laughs> HC-130 are primarily used as tankers, uh, to refuel HH-60 rescue helicopters, they loaded it up with all their equipment. And they did this mid-ocean jump, which is among the rarest and most complicated mission that the Air Force and Air Guard rescue units trained for. There's only been 12 mid-ocean jumps since 2010. Wow. Oh, nice. To reach the Costa Rican sailor, the California crew team first flew to Mexico City before continuing towards the boat. It's like, God damn. So... Why they don't they call to... Florida or the East Coast and say, hey, guys, put somebody in the air? Yeah. It takes three hours well, down Florida, South America. Coast, Costa Rica is still it's three still, It's still Central hours America. Yeah. It's yeah, but it ain't freaking maybe four West hours. Coast. Well, that's it, true. It's not West Coast. Uh, I wonder if they're divided like the SEAL teams where they have specific capabilities. Responsibilities. Yeah, responsibilities. And maybe. Maybe everybody was like, not, not us. Go get the that's, air guard guys. Yeah, that's just so, wild. But uh, anyway, though PJs regularly trained to do free fall jumps into water landings, they were the heavily laden fin wearing team, which I'll show in the video, appears to have opted to use static line parachutes similar to, to, to traditional paratrooper equipment used by the Army so they could jump at a lower altitude. And no, they could altitude. be more, and uh, this says, by using the static line shoots, it allows the PJs to exit in a sitting position, which is a lower risk technique when a jumper is loaded with heavy gear. Static line deployments also allow the PJs to jump from a lower altitude, making the landings more accurate. So once they got up, once they jumped in and they got aboard the boat, they spent several days monitoring and treating this guy's uh, neurological state. On the boat? boat? On the boat. Wow. Both wow. the patient and the PJ team eventually transferred to a larger ship, which steamed the group into Punta Arenas, Costa Rica, where the patient was transferred to the hospital. So they spent several days on the boat with this guy who doesn't speak English, but they left the translator in the plane. <laughs> he was helpful. Did they, did they really <laughs> leave the translator? Well, I, I don't. They said there was four PJs and this this tech sergeant who was the translator who was on the plane. They didn't say he I like, jumped. He wasn't an actual translator. He was just a freaking air crew guy that could speak Spanish. Spanish. You know how that you know exactly <laughs> how that went in. They're like I was thinking to say day shift that can speak Spanish. Anybody on day shift that can speak Spanish? <laughs> yeah, man. He can tech sergeant can. Oh, okay. See, call ah, son of a bitch. You're now a translator, hey, man. Come on. You're going to coast to I had tickets tonight. It's like not anymore, buddy. God George Clinton, it. I lost out on George Clinton tickets. <laughs> <laughs> Going to Boulder. You're on your oh, way south, it, man. The fuckadelic was tonight. Oh, my yeah, God. Marty, that, dude, that's real, Marty. What? You called me You called me into Boulder once. It was a last-minute call to Boulder. I had George Clinton and the P-Funk. Are you serious? Yeah. I had no idea. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was a... But I was the last one you called, and you're like, dude, I need it. I was like, yeah, I'll go to bed. What a man. <laughs> you I had no idea. Tickets. I didn't know you had tickets to that. That would have been good, huh? No the shit. The fuckadelic. Wow. Well, Jake has just proved he's got your back, man. As he, he's a bad, he was a badass. Uh, got man, your back. That's for sure. I, I knew there was that no if denying. Marty, when Marty was scheduling, I knew that if he called me or Willie, it was like I was last <laughs> ditch. Like I was the last ditch effort for mission. Willie was the last ditch effort for GSO ground system. Well, I, I would, see you I space would... weenies having each other's back, man. Yeah, on occasion. <laughs> Actually, we had your back too, Eric. No, no, we had you all never of America's. My back. We no. had all of America's back. No, you never had no. my back. Oh yes, we did. You just didn't know it. Yeah, I didn't know it. Man. <laughs> The guard said this mission represented the 129th Wing's 
1,158 life saved. Wow. Nice. Yeah. That's, that's impressive. These guys, they that's got it going good. on, man. And you can see them. They'll walk out of the plane um, with fins on. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. But... Man, I was. Oh, no, you're good. I wanted to what in the shit. crap? Yeah, look at all that shit they're carrying. That that's is insane amount of gear. Of is that oxygen oh, on their head? Because I didn't think they were. No, because really... they're not jumping that high. Look, they're, no. they're walking oh, they're out. They're going their, with fins. With their fins. Like, they're literally walking out yeah. with fins on. That's they're pretty amazing. And how much Model. weight is on the back in the pitch black? Oh, you can I see know. the actual water. Look yeah, at the lights see, of the boat down there. You can see the boat right in there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it looked like strobes. They had strobes. Yeah, that, they are the strobes. Yeah. So yeah, they dropped those. Oh, flares they got the flare out. too. Those flares are like a thousand by a thousand illumination. That's freaking cool. So that was that was those guys jumping out. They saved the guy. Wow. Uh, Eleven fifty-eight. That was the life save. So that was that's pretty neat. That was they had they had all the pieces to assemble an MRI machine on board. <laughs> that's how big their bags look. It could have been. <laughs> Yeah, look, you, you, you ain't look at it. That was bad, man. You ain't kidding. They're like, uh, it's a machine. What do you mean? What kind of music would you like to listen to? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I'll put that. I'll put that link in the description, and it's pretty cool. All right. Nice. So two good feels, or two feel good stories. <laughs> now let's get to the opposite of that, right? So, uh, and this is pretty. This is pretty recent. This just happened yesterday. But a U.S. soldier. What's this from? This is from the Associated Press. <laughs> the U. A U.S. soldier facing military discipline actions flees to North Korea while touring a border village. Woo! Yeah. So an American soldier, and I, I th- there's more information on on this guy now. An American soldier facing military disciplinary actions fled across a heavily armed border from South Korea into North Korea, a U.S. official said on Tuesday, becoming the first American detained in the North in nearly five years. So wow. good on you, Private. <laughs> uh, two wow. U.S. officials said the soldier detained was Private Second Class Travis King, <clears throat> who had just been released from a South Korean prison where he'd been held on assault charges and was facing... Additional military discipline actions in the United States. My guess is because the, the, the mm-hmm. I think the charge was he went downtown and he got in this massive fight and he beat the crap out of some people. So they probably UCMJ him and busted him down to private second class because that's basically what you get out of basic. That's your rank. So they probably busted him all down. They were going to fly him back to Fort Bliss, his home of record, or his home his home station, and probably boot him. Right. But King, crafty as he is, he uh, got him. He was in him. his early 20s. He was escorted to, to the airport to be returned to Fort Bliss. But instead of getting on the plane, he left and joined a tour of the Korean border village of Panmunjom. So he wow. went, th- the story was he went through security. <laughs> and instead of getting on the flight, somehow he saw this civilian tour group. He was in civilian clothes. I, and I thought he was being escorted, but I don't think he was being escorted. Evidently not past security. Right. Uh, well, that's a good point. Yeah, good point. His so, escorts probably watched him go through security and were like, <laughs> yep, we're good. Eric, did you ever have to escort anybody like that? Yeah, I took a couple guys to Leavenworth and uh, Fort Smith, Arkansas to jail. Did you fly and, with them? Yeah. I, they, I didn't just put them through security. We were with them the whole way. Were they cuffed? and? Everything? Yep. Only cuffed when we were walking. We wouldn't do it on the airport. They just had, or in the airplane. Yeah. They sat right next to us, but we didn't cuff them. That was no life, life safety issues. Oh, I guess so, yeah. Not but, con air, Marty. We, <laughs> not con air. <laughs> I remember when I, I was know. a lieutenant, I was out in the field, and we were out in just the field at Fort Polk. We were just out in the, you know, in the field. We weren't deployed or anything. And we had this guy... I can't remember his name. I can say his face, but uh, he didn't want to be in the army anymore. But it was like, yeah, come on. You're part of the team. It was only like a five-man team. We were forward observers uh, with the 113. 
<laughs> and we woke up. This guy was gone. Nice. <laughs> and we were like, I, I asked the staff sergeant, I was like, where'd he go? He's like, I don't know. We can't find him. He had just walked away. And even though it's out in the field, there's still kind of like one entrance into going into the field. Mm-hmm. And it's where the wash racks are. So you bring your vehicles out of the field, you wash them, and then you go out to the motor pools and stuff. So he was walking. He walked like all night. You know, it was a couple, it was five, six miles from where we were. And they he caught said, him at the wash done. rack. I'm done. Yeah, he was he was just going, he went AWOL in the field. It's crazy. So the MPs picked him up and they're like, what do you want? And it was like, and the colonel was like, bring him back to his team. And I was like, God damn, we gotta watch this guy now for the next week. Yeah. So my sergeant tied him up. <laughs> he tied him up. Yeah, it just sat him there because oh, we were goodness. on a we were on an observation point calling in artillery. And we just stayed there for like two days. And he like tied him up. He's like, you stay there. <laughs> what are you trying to imagine? Tie him up with rope or something? Uh I don't I think he Bear had zip cords. Yeah, it was something like that. Oh, he tied him to a tree, but my sergeant was a ranger and he was like, This bullshit. I was like, Should we leave him tied to a tree? It's like, Why are they leaving him with us? Why don't they just take him away? I'm like, I don't know. So he tied him up. How does the oh, young God. North Korean perimeter guard not go, Holy shit, I'm going to get to shoot somebody? Well, it, there's I, there's I, there's more to the story. I just took, I just what, took that little sojourn. So, Marty, into- like, I. I kind of try to put myself in that person, your guy, and this guy both. Yeah. Are, what are they envisioning being so incredibly bad well, in that night, least. in that next week, in that whatever? That That's a good point. Yeah. The alternative is to, one, either walk all night and just try to walk away yeah. from a military assignment. Yeah, that's what like, he thought he could do. I mean, was he super pumped? Like, was he super nervous when he started off? And then as he's going, he's like, fuck yeah, this is awesome. Oh, I love it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm out of here. Like, the guy at, went, at like two miles. The, <laughs> the guy who went AWOL with me had, had uh, I, don't, I don't know what it was. I know he didn't have like a mental thing. He was just like fed up. He was like, military is yeah. not for me. Yeah. He's a year into his first assignment. He was 20, like this guy, maybe. Couldn't handle 20. It. Just couldn't handle. I I I don't think he couldn't handle just it because he did all he was supposed to do. He was just like, I don't want to deal with it. Yeah. So he's just like, I'll just walk away. And he there's a sense. lot of guys that go, hey, well, then they never find. Oh yeah. You know? Because they'll look for a certain point of time, but they're not. They're you're not a wanted criminal. You know, I mean that's You're a just, lot of money you, they would be wasting on AWOL people. Well, true, and I think I think uh, a status goes out next to your name, so if you ever get picked up for something, or like, oh, you're AWOL from yeah. the army too. Law enforcement has it. Yeah, law enforcement. Is that is that uh just like if you pull this guy's name, it gets once and warrants, something? once and warrants. It's part of every. Oh, um, okay. Oh, is that CBI, what like Colorado Bureau of Investigations? Yeah. Um, everything goes to them, so your record is flagged. Right, it says you're AWOL. So if you if you never get in trouble, right, yeah. you live your good. life, right? Yeah, you're fine. Because the army's not going to chase you. No. I don't think the military chases you past a certain point. It, well, and it also depends on what you did. Yeah, and he you didn't know. have oh, clearance yeah, or nothing. Yeah, yeah. Like if someone that, just so. walked away, that's true. But if you did something, they'll hunt you. They'll look. Well, down. we we knew guys uh, up at Buckley when we were there. Because everybody we worked at, we worked with the top secret clearance. So if somebody didn't show for work, then it raises a whole ton of flags because yeah. uh, because of the TS clearance. Yeah. But you're if not, you're not sure cleared, and like, yeah, let them walk, whatever. <laughs> but that we were just reminiscing. Willie and I were just talking about that one, and I can't remember his name, and he did get. He did get screwed over. Remember where you could be on the ops floor with an interim? Right. Like, like early, an initial in the early days. Right? Yeah, in the early days. Yeah. And then yeah, yeah. and then they were like, oh, you can't be on the ops floor with an interim. And we right. took that guy off crew and we moved him over to that special duty area. And there and he still had to have a clearance over there, right? Remember? Yeah. Right, right. And he goes, and then about like four or five months of this guy doing nothing 
but that special duty crew shift. Mm -hmm. And then somebody goes, don't you have to have a clearance to sit over there too? And they're like, oh yeah. Um, <laughs> send him to CE. Well, they did Weeds minimum. Seeds, baby. Yeah. Seeds. Dude, they, they, was this I mean, at, was, was this a, at E5? Yeah. He was a staff sergeant, right? And yeah, and, I went and to, they were I, like, yeah, I went to school with that guy. Yeah. Yeah. I know you, you and I both worked multiple shifts with him. Either way, they didn't do any good coordination with no. CE and CE isn't super rank heavy. So a staff sergeant's going to be running a crew doing something like that. Right. He shows up reports to CE and they're like, who the hell are you? Yeah. They're like, what, what? And he's like, I'm supposed and they're to like, why you. do we have you? And he's like, I'm reporting here. And they're like, go back. We don't <laughs> need you. What are you talking about? Well, <laughs> Eric, you know what this guy did? I'm not gonna. He, he not didn't go back. He didn't go back. Right. 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 He didn't he go back to CE. Did. He never went back to CE, and he never went back to us. Right. Oh, he so both back. thought they were good, <laughs> and, and nobody right. thought to ask about it. And it was literally like a year later, Eric. Yeah. A year later, one of the guys I was working in the eval shop was like, "Hey, man, you know who I saw the other day? Booth." He's a golf pro over at the golf course. <laughs> he played there. golf for a year. He oh my god! On the military he time, he was wow. getting paid, and did, yeah. and our squadron didn't have a clue where he was at. So no. the first sergeant didn't check on him. No it idea. Wow. Nothing. Oh, he was crazy. gone for a full year, getting paid staff sergeant salary, BAH, everything. And then double dipping at the golf shop. It was he got awesome. a job at the yeah. golf shop. Yeah. Worked there and they're like, oh, you're good at golf. Yeah. Go be the golf pro. Wow. And That's a hell of a story right I, there, man. Dude. So good. It, it was like, what the hell? And so, it wasn't until one of the guys, until John Dan it. Stacy shows up and we were bullshitting about John it. Stacy. Right? John yeah. Stacy. Yeah. Like, we were bullshitting what? about it. We we're like, oh man, I thought, where did he go? He goes, oh, he's at the golf. He's a golf pro <laughs> over there. We're like, really? He's still in? Or he's oh not my in? God. And they're like, evidently not. And then one of the master sergeants overheard that and they're like, pretty sure uh, Booth is still <laughs> in. And they went to the first sergeant. We're like, what the heck? I also See, think, like, what the heck? That was a right. year ago. What are you talking about? I also think there was something That's else crazy. that. He had a car that he had parked in the parking lot, but it broke oh. down and he left it yeah. there for almost yeah. a year. And the security yeah. forces were like, whose effing car is this? So they finally yeah. looked it up. They found it was Booth and they're like, oh yeah, where's Booth? <laughs> yeah. All of it, all of it was coming at the same time. Unbelievable. <laughs> it was, it was but that's bullshit is like, we didn't catch he was gone for a year. Yeah. Security forces didn't catch that there was right. a car randomly parked in a secure freaking parking lot for Decaying. a year. <laughs> Decaying. Yeah, just wow. biodegrading right there. And they're like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> this guy's getting paid over there playing golf. Oh, it, yeah. was it was so hilarious. hilarious. Yes. This big. That guy had him this big. He said he was big, man. But that's the I thing. Know. Right? He tried to do the right thing. And then right. he was like, right. I'm just getting screwed over. This is bullshit. They'll call me when my clearance goes through. It never right. went through. No. Oh man. No, there was something in his record. I think that they got yeah. denied for it. So it, it was some relative or something like that. Right? Dishonorably discharged. I think I, it I, was. Who knows? I I, I, I still honestly, don't know I don't how that case was resolved. To be honest with you, or other than honorable, probably. I think it was just you're not reenlisting. Wait, he didn't. We did serious. He didn't, he didn't really, really do anything illegal. Come on, man. Not following the orders. CE said, we don't want you. Yeah. The but, squadron said, we don't want you. So but walk it was away also, don't go back to the guy and say, hey, man. Hey, I'm not saying it was right. That's the re that's a responsible thing. But he didn't do anything. I, I guess you could get him on failure to follow orders. AWOL. Orders, I suppose. Or AWOL. Failure, uh, yeah, AWOL. failure to But appear. is it AWOL if you're never looked for? <laughs> well... If I nobody comes they're... looking for you, are you AWOL? It just is absolutely I love it. without but, leave. But then, but then when they found him and they were like reporting, he's like, okay. Yeah, he wasn't adverse <laughs> right. to do it. He was did, like, I get, did I get my clearance? Cool. I'll be 
I really enjoyed this year off golf. Yeah, it's been oh great. This year, he was huh? good too. Supposedly he was pretty good. That's wow. the thing. He was he was good at golfing, but he was also a good mission crew chief. He was he knew his like, shit. Yeah, he wasn't yeah. an idiot. Yeah. So he wasn't a troublemaker. He just freaking no. He wow. just literally got screwed over so yeah. much. Like yeah. Eric, this special duty. We used to rotate out in this facility because it just kind of like it just sucked. Like you're not yeah. do you're wait you're coiled and waiting to do absolutely nothing. Let's finish out with private second class Travis. Yeah, King, sorry. Right. So he went through security, didn't get on the plane, joined a civilian travel group, and went up to Panmun John to the DMZ. And this was like some civilian like student. Uh, uh, group and they didn't know who he was. And I guess they said he kept quiet. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm sure uh, he did. As they're touring the DMZ, there's a witness said, "This man gives out a loud ha 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 and just runs in between some buildings, right <laughs> away away from the tour group. He ran between some buildings and the and the guards. I guess the North Korean guards weren't uh typically where they were because of COVID, so they had backed off." So he ran, and they lost sight of him. Wow. And uh, North Korea has picked him up. So Supposedly. infiltracing into North Korea seems to be pretty easy. You just I run. I guess it, yeah, nobody, nobody goes is. that way. Yeah. I mean, it's like it's like crossing the Rio Grande to get into Mexico. You know, <laughs> yeah. who's going to do that, right? So you thought it was you thought the paperwork was difficult to retire as an active reservist because nobody's ever seen it before. Can you imagine <laughs> that? They're like, uh, what paperwork do we do? Like somebody <laughs> literally ran to us. <laughs> Can yeah, you imagine the guys are like, what are you doing, dude? <laughs> I, like, I'm seeking dude, asylum know, in North Korea. Have you been to the you have you been yeah. to the DMZ? Uh, yeah, I've never been up there, no. I've been to Graham, yeah. but I have never been up there. So. I've toured it. In like the no man's land, there's two big buildings on either side, right? right? Yeah. With nothing but like... And right in the middle is where they walls. signed the armistice. And right, right, the right in the middle, there's two smaller buildings in the middle. Yeah. And they signed the armistice, and there's ongoing guard presence on both sides of the building. Facing each other. But, right. Yep. And so I know exactly where he's talking about. He ran right straight dead middle. <laughs> DMZ g- giggling God. like a <laughs> son of a bitch. I got you guys so good. That's the I wonder best what part he's doing story, now. Right? Yeah. What's had... he say to a North Korean when they can't? Uh, I don't know. I'm defecting uh, here. I want to be. A, I want to have asylum in your country. What? I, I guess. I don't know. Uh, I bet you they don't have a form for that. They had a, another, uh, they, they talked to another witness in the tour group, and she thought they were doing some, like, annoying TikTok video. Oh, jeez. Like, he was going to run out, and they were going to catch him, you know, film him real quick, yeah. and then he was going to come back. But they're like, this guy just disappeared, and we never saw him again. Gone. And then they Nobody hustled us really. back on the bus and got us out of there. Because so. yeah, they were afraid yeah. it was going to be a shooting incident. Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, Something, you got yeah, this guy running right, right at you, and these guys are locked and loaded anyway. Yep. From the south so, to the north, I can't believe it didn't happen. I really can't. So we still don't know. North hasn't said anything uh, to you know as as the time we're recording this. This just happened yesterday morning. So, but that got me thinking to military auctions, mm-hmm. and so I've gone out to military auction sites, and you can get some pretty good deals sometimes, right? It's almost like police auctions. You can get some pretty good deals on police auctions. Tactical gear, stuff like that. Yeah. So once again, we are going to, you guys are going to play a game. Of course I'm we gonna, are. I'm going to administer, administer the game. So we're going to go out, and these are items I've taken off of the oh. military auction sites. All right. And I'll post those in a video when we do it. But you guys have to decide between the two items that I show, which one sold for more. So they're both similar. I've taken the time to compare these items, and they both sold for a similar amount. But you got to decide which one is more. All right? Yeah. Make sense? Yep. Yeah. yeah. So for those of you at home, and I'll put this on the video, the first two items are 93 bayonet knives with scabbards. And if you didn't and, know that you could outfit and they're modern, 
They're modern. <laughs> right. Yeah, because they're, they're like cause, desert cause they're standards, tan. right? Yeah, exactly. Desert. They're tan right. And right. Brown. Um, yeah. So if you if you didn't know that you could outfit a small militia through, by going <laughs> through military <laughs> auctions, now you know. Yeah. So this auction item was 93 bayonet knives versus 92 World War II steel pot helmets. The more exp- oh man, I don't know. which one sold there's, for more? There's a historical value to the helmets, but then there's also like a pointy cutty value to, to the knives. To the knives, I am gonna go helmets because I can't figure out what the hell you would do with them, so it's got to cost more. All right, so I'm, Eric I'm, goes with helmets. You know I'm going against the American value of history <laughs> and going straight up cutty pointy bayonets and the winner is oh, the bayonets by 15 dollars by 15 dollars are so you sitting me the 93 bayonets sold for four thousand fifteen dollars and the 92 world mm-hmm. war ii steel pot helmets sold for four thousand dollars hold on hold on hold on hold on all right you ready for the next one yeah i'm mm-hmm. excited about this okay Oh, the helmet! Two hundred and thirty-one flyers helmet bags plus a <laughs> hundred and twenty duffel bags. That's all in one lot. Versus twelve high gear impact reduction suits. So I think I those even, are. I don't even know what that is. What I, the hell I, is I that? saw. There's a picture it, of them, and it looks like uh, it's kind of like uh, the anti riot suit. Yeah. Or riot suit. Man, so pads, like elbow gear. pads, yeah. or or yeah. yeah, yeah, it looks like the pads someone a trainer would wear, right, to block right. some MMA yeah. training, like like a red man, like a red yeah, man, like yeah. a red okay. man, yep. like yeah. a red man. So you get twelve full sets of that, or Eric, you picked first last time. A whole so rotate, get load of bags. I'm I'm going bags, <laughs> just because it's funny. <laughs> All right, I'll still take the impact. You, I'll you take have the to impact take. Here. You have to. I'll, have I'll have, to. I'll we're we're rotating back and forth. I got All you. Right. Okay. All right. You are doing opposite this time. Yeah. Hey. And the impact <laughs> wins by twenty dollars. Seriously. <laughs> so the three hundred and fifty different bags sold for forty three oh five. Well, you need that many bags to put ninety two helmets in. Apparently. Uh, the 12 riot gear things sold for 43.25 wow so we're tied up locked up at one Wait. to one you want the math on that riot gear i don't want the math <laughs> don't do the math all right here's the next items oh, look at 360 dollars. so you got a pallet of mres essentially all right oh, wow. i don't know how many they are I don't know. I don't. I, I know there's other ones that sold, but I I realized I didn't know how many there were. But that's a you pallet. know those even look different from what I yeah had exactly. Mark. That's what I was gonna say. I it's agree. different. Or eighty five pairs of snowshoes, all small smalls. <laughs> <laughs> nope, that wasn't snow specified. But yes, you are right. <laughs> You have your choice from size six to size seventeen. <laughs> Nothing in the between. So Nothing in between. MSR so a, snowshoes. So a oh, pallet man. of MREs or eighty five pairs of snowshoes. I'm gonna go MREs. Food. Ooh. Oh man. Necessity. Yep. Food. Eighty five. Eighty five pairs yeah, of snowshoes. I like my snowshoes though. I'll I'll take my snowshoes. <laughs> All right. All right. Snowshoes ah, wins. <laughs> this proves that when we have the opportunity, we always choose the lesser value. So the, the MRE doesn't get a choice. The pallet of MRE sold for two thousand. Eighty-five pairs of snowshoes sold for two thousand and sixty. Wow. Yeah. Crazy. Next. Here three. Three I robot. Tactical what? robots or one 2016 Polaris Ranger 4x4 ATV. 
Okay. And I chose that because that looks like what we shuttled in. It's not a razor, yeah. but it looks like you got to wear a bicycle helmet. You That's have right. to wear a bicycle helmet. <laughs> you got to wear the bicycle helmet, <laughs> right? Right. So three <laughs> iRobot Hackbot tactical robots. Do they have flamethrowers on them? No flamethrowers. Oh, That's, man. But, but you could easily mount that, I think. <laughs> this looks like a pinchy and pokey claw. That's all it looks like. It does, yeah. yeah. This one's yours. You got, three yeah. you got three of them. So you got your own little but, fire team going. First of all, I'm kind of nervous about whoever bought those three tactical robots. <laughs> They're in showing a lot of robots, right? Pennsylvania. <laughs> what do you got to do in Chambersburg, Pennsylvania? That you're like, you know yeah. what I need? Three Couple tactical robots. robots. That's perfect. Nobody's getting near my property now. Is there a bank in Chambersburg? <laughs> or a Polaris Ranger. <laughs> In or, in Austin, Texas, though Polaris Ranger yeah. in Austin, Texas, that makes yeah. sense. Four by four Dang. ATV. I'm going ridiculous. I'm going straight robots. Robots. You know why you're wrong in this instance? Ah. Oh. You want to know why you you want to know why you're wrong? I want because to. the Ranger in Texas is oh, need, I know. Is, is needed. Oh, that's oh. value. Yeah, it's it's like the location is value added. Yeah, the that. three tactical robots are just for fun. That ranger, somebody said, I need that something. All that's those million million pay more. Acre ranches. That's you pretty pay good. More for yeah. All right, I'm sticking with robots. Oh, the robots! <laughs> oh, <in your face. laughs> that is pure ridiculous. Unbelievable! Factor. You know, everyone in Texas knows the value of a four seater Polaris. They're like. Oh, yeah. mm. <laughs> they're like it's mil spec and they're like that doesn't impress mil me spec. No. <laughs> mil spec who cares so the polaris sold, a, bot, sold for five thousand the robot sold for fifty three hundred yeah <laughs> there's been a board cop with a random fucking All bayonet right. just carving shit in the handle <laughs> Of this. Oh god. So we got a 1993 <laughs> deuce and a half. All right. All right. Wow. Or a 2013 <laughs> pontoon boat. How is that a military item? Uh, Probably M MWR Pon or something like that. Yeah, MWR. Pontoon yeah. boat in Missouri, the land of 10,000 I mean lakes. Lakes, yeah. yeah. That's Minnesota. <laughs> Either <way>, Missouri. <laughs> The Ozarks, the Ozarks. The Ozarks, yeah. I agree, but ten thousand lakes. Yeah. I think that's Minnesota. All right. I don't even care. That that whole region means uh, no offense to. The, well, no, full offense to them. <laughs> it means nothing to me. Hey, does the deuce and a half run? I gotta know. It says it runs. Yeah, it says it runs. No. All right, I'm I'm gonna go. It's in Maryland. I'm going M thirty five A two deuce and a half all the way. Oh, you're taking the deuce. I'm okay. taking the truck, man. Oh, I'm happy about try. this one. I'm I'm excited. The pontoon about boat can't cost as much as the deuce and half. Oh, 100 percent. Yeah, yeah. Pontoon boat all the way, my friend. Oh no! Oh, are you serious? The deuce and half sold for twelve thousand five hundred. Uh, the pontoon boat sold for thirteen thousand. You know just how many wrong. slightly buzzed, pissed <laughs> off fucking Missourians <laughs> were at that auction? They're like. Oh. Pontoon boat, get the pontoon boat. I can't believe that shit, man. You paid thirteen thousand dollars for that pontoon. You could go buy a brand new one somewhere for ten. You know why it was so much, Eric? I have no idea, Jake. That's the exact model featured in the movie or the show Ozarks. Uh, uh, right. up the value, uh, Jason Bateman. Yeah, that's right. I'll buy it. All right, Whatever. last last one. I have no idea. So you got two thousand twelve. the trailer though. Uh, you got a 2012 uh, Humvee four-door hardtop with slant back versus a 1999 rib boat with trailer, like the like the Navy SEALs use, right? In Santa Clarita, yeah, California. California. Yeah. So right there on the ocean. Well, so far up to now, that location doesn't mean shit. <laughs> <laughs> No, it does not. What are you talking about? It didn't you mean shit. Not a, 
A son of a bitch. If it did, even my a son of a bitch in Georgia would shoot. You're letting Jake use a like a humbie. mind control trick on you. It's Over working. a rib boat trailer? No, no. Look at the which one's red and which one's blue state too. <laughs> Who's more option to freaking go? California, to... the boat. Yeah, fair, fair. No way. You think there's more military reps or people going to military auctions in California? It's a good looking Humvee, though. There's a lot. It is a good looking of... Humvee. Got the extended <laughs> air <laughs> intake. You know? If my deuce in the ass can't be more than that pontoon boat, that Hummer can't be more than that boat and trailer. But does it include yours, Marty? What? Who picked one? Who picked one? The picture doesn't Jake have is yours. picking this time. Oh, it's me? I yeah. thought I was talking all that shit just it's to try to you. dissuade you. <laughs> it's you. I'm going Humvee. I'll take the boat, man. It's going to be the boat. It's a horrible life choice, but I'm going Humvee. Oh, oh my hey, God. Way my God. Off. Did you believe way that? Off. The Humvee sold for 37300 The rib boat sold for Fifty thousand one wow. with trailer, with trailer. Yeah, with trailer. And I'd I, like to see fifty k. He's all up. <laughs> but you're only going to pay what twenty three thousand for the freaking deuce and a half, man? Come on. <laughs> it's what not does a rib boat cost in Georgia? Rib boat and trailer fifteen k <laughs> in Georgia. There it is. It's not even twenty. It's twelve thousand dollars for the freaking deuce and a half, man. Yeah, that's you should get one, Eric. I want one. You should. We they drove had, that uh, So from yeah. Clark Air Base out to uh, O'Donnell, yeah, which was yeah. where you know Air Base Ground Defense, the training site was. It was like eighteen miles, so we all had freaking weapons in our laps because there was a terrorist element there. So oh, we he did in an hour. Yeah. Fucking five ton and deucing ass. We were hauling ass. I freaking was coming through this neighborhood, ripped my mirror off because you're not oh, supposed to. You drop. Really? Oh yeah, I took the fucking mirror right off. We're all an yeah. ass. I got my nine mil sitting in my crotch. I was like, man. Holy shit. Yeah. How did Crazy. that end up? Oh, it was good. I mean, it that was just up a school zone. That's what it, <laughs> ends, it ends up. That's why I like the big ass truck, man. No fucking go anywhere, man. Just an ass did, yeah. Yeah, yeah. they'll go anywhere. Five tons <laughs> did too, but they were just yeah. so much. You know, yeah. Five tons. Oh, we had both. We pull them big ass who water buffaloes. Who won? I, I don't know who won. Jake. I did. Jake did. Wow. Who won the who won the select? Oh, you tied on the sled. We tied slubs. Yeah. Which I should have got a bonus point for Betty White. Not no. half. <laughs> Don't worry, we'll bring the celebs back. Oh, <laughs> celebs Betty White back. tearing shit up in her day. <laughs> Damn you, Betty. Uh, Woo. Women right. in the military. I we gotta put an end to this thing. This thing is all over the place tonight. I like it. So we, yeah, I know it might be our best episode. Who knows? But it sure doesn't feel that way. Betty White, <laughs> <laughs> you're killing me, man. Oh. You got a sacred heart candle with Betty White's face on it. Now I'm imagining there's a blow Wait, up doll what? of Betty White in the freaking closet. <laughs> there's a Betty White doll. How do you have a candle with Betty White on it? It's a sacred heart one. Oh my it's a Virgin Big Guadalupe candle. Only with Betty White's face instead of them. <laughs> or Jesus. It's 100% blasphemy. La Madonna de Betty oh, yeah. White. Yeah. <laughs> my God. She's holding her lilies. Looking good, oh, Betty. That's got to that's gotta go on our background. Yeah. <laughs> end up end this episode please please end up <laughs> on behalf of all of us here i'd like to thank you for listening today please like and share and subscribe and let us know maybe don't let us know how we did in the comments and as always <laughs> make sure to download the next episode let for us know service headline news man thanks for the week i'll see you next week <laughs> i'm with jake let us know yeah let us know <laughs> we are on diminishing yep. returns here that's for sure. Yeah, good call. Yeah, but it was a good night, man. It was ah, fun. It's always, I, I always I, have a blast on it. Good damn, I had a good night. <laughs> Me too. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week.